Exception handling helps us deal with unforeseen errors that could potentially appear in our code. To handle exceptions we can use the try catch block as well as the finally keyword to clean up our resources after the execution of the block. Even though there is nothing wrong with this approach, we can extract all the exception handling logic in a single centralized place. By doing that, we can make our code more readable and the exception handling logic more maintainable. In this video, we are gonna handle errors by using a try catch block first and after that by using a built-in middleware and our custom middleware that handles our exceptions on a global level. We are doing this to demonstrate the benefits of handling exceptions globally. To get the source code for our starting project, you can visit the global error handling article on our site. The link to the article is in the description below. So, let's start the application by opening the various controller in the starting project. In this controller there is a single get method and an injected logger service. It's a common practice to include the log messages while handling errors. And for that reason we've created a logger manager service. It logs all the messages to the C drive but you can set that by modifying the path in the nlogconfig file. If you want to read more on how to use nlog in .NET Core, you can visit the logging with nlog article on our site. You can find the link to the article in the description as well. Now let's start with the action modification. The first thing we're gonna do is adding a try catch block. Inside the try block we log an info message and return students from the data manager class. This class is just local storage to simulate the database. Finally, we log an additional info message with the student's count and return our data. Of course, we have to modify the catch block as well. Let's log an error message and return the 500 status code with the internal server error message. Now we can start our application and test the result in Postman. Let's press the send button and we get 200 OK status code and we can see our data. We've created the log files for this application, so let's examine them. And from what we can see, everything works as expected. Now let's get back to our code and force an exception right below the get all students method call by throwing a new exception with a custom message. With this in place, we're gonna start our application again and send the same request. There we go, we can see the error message. And of course, let's inspect the log file. There it is, we can see the error message log here as well. So, this works just fine, but the downside of this approach is that we need to repeat our try catch blocks in all the actions in which we want to catch unhandled exceptions. Well, there is a better approach to do that by using the use exception handler middleware. It's a built-in middleware we can use to handle exceptions. So, let's dive into the code to see this middleware in action. First, we're gonna add a new class error details in the models folder. This class has two properties, the status code, the message and the overridden to string method which uses JSON converter to serialize the object. We're gonna use this class for setting the error details. Next, let's create a new folder called extensions and a new static class exception middleware extensions which we're gonna modify. First, we create an extension configure exception handler method with the iApplication Builder and iLogger Manager parameters and with the registered use exception handler middleware. By using the run method from the app error object, we register the context object and populate the status code with internal server error value from the HTTP status code enumeration. And finally, populate the content type of our response. Then we extract the exception handler feature into the context feature variable by using the iException handler feature interface. If it's not null, we log the error message by using contextfeature.error property. 
And finally, return the response with the custom created error details object. Of course, we have to populate the status code and the message properties. To be able to use this extension method, let's modify the configure method inside the startup class. With all these in place, we are safe to remove the try catch block from our action. And there we go, our action method is much cleaner now, and what's more important, we can reuse this functionality to write more readable actions in the future. Now, we can inspect the result by sending the same request from Postman. There it is, our status code. And if we check our log file, we can see the error message there. So, we just saw the built-in middleware in action, but now we're going to use custom middleware to achieve the same thing. Let's create a new folder named custom exception middleware and the new exception middleware class. So, we create two private read-only variables, the request delegate next and iLogger manager logger. Then we register them through the dependency injection. The next parameter of the request delegate type is a function delegate that can process our HTTP requests. After that, we created the invoke async method with the HTTP context parameter. This method is essential for the request delegate type because it can process requests without it. If everything goes well, the next delegate carries the request and the get action in the controller generates a successful response. But if it's not successful, and it's not gonna be because we are forcing an exception, our middleware will set off the catch block and call the handle exception async method. So let's create that method. Inside it, we set up the response content type, the status code with the well-known enumeration value, and write our response in async manner. We assign the value for the status code property and the message property as well. Now, let's modify our exception middleware extensions class with another static method to register our exception middleware. Finally, let's use it in the configure method in the startup class. Great, now let's inspect the result again. There you go we get the custom middleware message. So, as you can see, we implemented custom middleware in a couple of steps. Let's sum everything up. We've learned how to handle errors in a more sophisticated and cleaner way. The code is much more readable and our exception handling logic is now reusable for the entire project. If you like this video, we would highly appreciate you hit those like and subscribe buttons down there. Of course, don't forget to visit the Codemaze blog to download the source code. If you like what you see, you can subscribe to our mailing list to get notified about our new content and videos. So stay tuned and all the best!